Welcome back. The real hidden tragedy from COVID is how it's affecting everyone's mental health. And the reason I say that is both the AMA and the CDC have done various studies and all of those studies have determined that between 70 and 95% of all illness and disease has an emotional element. Stress. Stress is an emotion at the root of the illness and disease. It's played a part in it. Well, with everyone on different sides as to how to handle this, because it's something in part we've never dealt with, so nobody really knows exactly what to do. Emotions are high, stress is high. Our emo you know, I'm not a big fan of the word mental health. I prefer emotional health. I think it's more accurate. Our emotional health needs to be at the forefront of how we navigate all of this, since it's playing such a major part in whether we are sick or not. So today, I want to help you with that. I want to increase your mental health awareness around COVID. And to do that, I'm going to give you three rock solid strategies to help you navigate that, a magic phrase, and then a ton of resources so that your mental health can be tip top as you work through all of this. So. The first thing to remember, the first awareness strategy to know is that to feel powerful, we need to defend against feeling powerless, all right? And so what's the first strategy? What's the first awareness that we need to have? Well, here's what I'd encourage you to do. Get out two pieces of paper. On one of them, put what I can control. On the other one, what I can't control. And then three columns, people, places, things. Here's what you're going to find. If you're really struggling in this, you're going to find that you're spending almost all of your time focusing on what you can't control, the people, places, and things you have absolutely no control over. We can never tell somebody what to think, what to feel, what to believe, or what to do. If you, if you weren't aware, whenever we try and do that, those three things are the hallmark of verbal abuse. Tell, whenever we tell somebody what to think, believe, or do, we are enacting verbal abuse, all right? Now, the problem is, why this makes us so powerless is we have no control over somebody, right? And so the more we demand that whichever side of the argument you're on, the more we demand you listen to my side, do you see what's happening to me? I'm getting more and more powerless because you won't do it, and you're going to see why. There's tip number three is going to tell you why that, why that all ties together, okay? And I'm going to give you a tool for that. But that's what's happening is both sides are increasing their stress levels, their emotion levels, which puts them at risk to get sick. And we want to bring that down. And that's why I'm suggesting you do this so that when you get the urge to tell somebody what to think, believe, or do, you recognize, wait a minute, I have no control over people, places, and things. I can't tell people what to think, believe, or do, or you know what places they should go, or what things they should do. And they can't do that for me. And so, wait a minute, why am I spending my time allowing them to do this to me? Also, why am I spending my time trying to do this to them? I'm being abusive in that situation, and I'm creating my own powerlessness. Wait a minute, I need to get off of this and get on to what are the people, places, and things I can control. Here's a perfect example, a client of mine. She's actually someone I wrote about in my book. Um, she came to me, if you've read the book, she came to me for help for public speaking. And she was doing great, but all of a sudden this whole thing came up. And I'm not saying her opinion is right, it's just her opinion. Her opinion was that um, all the regulations were wrong. and but she felt she couldn't leave her house. So she was trapped and she was miserable and falling apart and she was filled with rage. And I had her do this exercise and I said, do you realize you're going against yourself? And that leads to step number two. I also had her list out what are your morals and values? What are your needs and wants? What are your negotiables and non-negotiables? Well, her morals and values were different then, you know, the side that's saying stay in and all of that. I said, so do you see you're going against your own morals and values and what you believe? What are your needs and wants? Well, she's a big traveler. Well, 
she could do all of many of those things are okay. There are many states where it's okay. And I asked her, why are you choosing to give your power away to people, places, and things that have no power over you and you're choosing not to travel when it's your biggest need and want? That's not their fault. You're blaming them for what you're doing to yourself. That's not kind to them. And then you're taking it out on them. You're doing that to yourself. Now, there are plenty of places where they don't allow that. Well, you don't have to go there. And they get to stay there if they want. That's what works for them. Do you see how all of a sudden, if both sides are focusing on what they can and can't control, do you see how the, the stress levels and everything goes way down? Everyone's okay, all right? Because we don't, we just can't control whether they do what we want. And so we can only focus on ourselves. And that leads to step number three. Remember I said earlier, uh, these tie in reality arguments. I can hear some of you going, yes, but they're wrong. Can you be absolutely certain about that? Are you 100% certain? Well, none of you can say that. This is all brand new. Everyone has their own reality as to how to handle this. Who's right or who's wrong? The bottom line is, it doesn't really matter. Even if you show somebody proof of something, we've all had this experience, we've literally shown them proof and they go, nope, not true. They didn't want to give up their reality and we can't control them. We can't make somebody accept our reality. When we try to, we are literally, whichever side you're on, if you're screaming and yelling that somebody should accept your reality, in those moments, whichever side we're on, excuse me, we are literally a five-year-old on the playground screaming, don't play with my Tonka truck. That's what's happening. We have given our power away and we are, we are, our whole emotional condition is now contingent on somebody else accepting our reality. Well, that's what five-year-olds do. They go, I need it my way. I need it my way. I need it my way. Or I can't be happy. You need to be different. Well, remember what what is the definition of verbal abuse? Whenever I tell somebody what to think, feel, or do. So when I'm in that place, I am now the abuser. When I am demanding that you accept my reality. Again, this is for either side. I'm not picking a side here. Both sides need to focus. Step number one, focus on what they control. Step number two, lay out their morals and values, needs and wants, negotiables and non-negotiables. Three, Stay out of reality arguments. Let the other side live the life that works for them. Stay away. If you think that you're, you can be injured at going, being around certain, 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 man, <laughs> it's not that hard to say. Being around certain people, places, or things, then don't go. You have every right to do that. And, but you don't have the right to tell them not to and vice versa. Over here, if you think it's okay to go anywhere, you don't have any right to tell them that they need to go there. Both get to do what they want. That's how you navigate reality arguments. That is kind and loving, and there's no verbal abuse in that. That's how you rectify it. Now, how does the magic phrase fit in? Here's how it fits in. In those moments, whichever side you're on, if someone's demanding you take on their reality, all you say is, you know, I'm really happy you're doing what works best for you. Because wouldn't you be? Because think about it. If I'm over here demanding you accept my reality, do you see what that means? They get to control my reality. Like, who says I am God? Because that's what this person or this side, whichever side, both sides right now are asking to play God and go, you need to believe what I believe. That's a God position. Well, wouldn't we feel better if we got supported and someone said, you know, my reality is different, but I'm glad you're doing what works best for you. That's the magic phrase. And do you see what else that does? That circles back to step number one. Focus on the people, places, and things I can control. Do you see how all of these tips in the magic phrase, they keep you healthy, they keep you safe, they lower your ability to get sick. The number one cause of illness and disease is stress and you lower it. This is the single greatest strategy to navigate this pandemic. 
is to increase your mental emotional awareness with those tips all right now i'm going to give you resources i encourage you go to my website www.thegreatnessuniversity.com or go to my youtube channel or my facebook channel whichever one you want go to the playlist and there you're going to find the first playlist I encourage you to look for is the codependence one because this is where you'll find the videos on how to uh, understanding morals and values, understanding needs and wants, understanding negotiables and non-negotiables. I know most people are like, oh, I know what they are. Trust me, when you watch those videos, you'll see, oh my gosh, there's a lot more to figuring these out than I thought. This is groundbreaking. Once I have this information, it's really going to make me powerful. So I encourage you to do that first. Also, to keep your mental health awareness up, I encourage you to check out the self-love playlist, the mindset playlist, the stress, fear, anxiety, and depression, and the insights and inspiration. All of those playlists, whether it's Facebook, YouTube, or in my online magazine, www.thegreatnessuniversity.com, check all those out. There's a ton of information to keep your mental, emotional health awareness sky high to keep you and those you care about healthy and safe during this difficult period for everybody. So if you think this will help somebody, maybe there's somebody you've been fighting reality is over, send this to them, share it with them and say, hey, I'm glad you're doing what's best for you. Let's call a truce. All right. Um, leave me your comments. Maybe you completely disagree. That's fine. You're welcome to share your reality and I encourage you to, especially if you disagree, dump it because all that anger and resentment and your wanting to control me needs to get out. And I won't take it personally. I don't encourage you to dump it on other people. That's what will make you sick. But I will allow you to let it out because if you sit in it, that's one of the key triggers that could make you sick. And so I encourage you, let out your desire to control me and control the narrative in the long run, it will help you navigate this illness and let it go. And once that energy is lower, just open yourself up to the consideration of, wow, this false power I'm looking for isn't working. Maybe I, got, I need to give this a try and allow others to have their reality. Maybe this will lower my stress and I will move from powerless to powerful. Just something to consider if it works for you. If not, keep your reality. And as always, Whatever you decide, enjoy the journey.